Hey everyone, this is James Labrie from Dream Theater, and you're watching Linea Rock. Thanks, James, for your time. We're in Milan at the Thank Forum. You. You're playing tonight, yes. 21st of February 2012. 12, yeah. So thanks for your time because it's welcome. a couple of hours prior to the show. Yes. So I know how hard it is for singers. Yeah. Um, so you played Pordenone last night and yes. I know the show was great. And so Italy loves Dream Theater and seems that Dream Theater love Italy as well. Mm -hmm. This special uh, connection, um, special relation that you have. Relationship, yeah. Yeah, with Italy is since the very early days. Um, yes, I remember coming over here in, I think it was early 93. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it was just, it was amazing right from the very beginning. Uh, there was just a, a warm reception. Uh, the fans were animated. The, you know, the, it was just overwhelming for us because it was uh, the, the first time coming to Europe, and then getting that kind of reception because we had already done, you know, through the states yeah. and and that. And it was they're a little bit more conservative or reserved. Mm. Whereas over here, everyone is extremely animated and very vocal and. So it was, it, was, it was extremely thrilling for us the very first time. And it has been great each and every time we've gone here because we've been building and maintaining this relationship for over 20 years. Yeah. Yeah. So on September, the uh -huh. awaited new album, A Dramatic Turn of Events, yep. uh, came out. And mm -hmm. it, it's actually the first one with Mike Mangini on drums. Yes. Uh, with his powerful drumming. Um, his amazing drumming! <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, yeah. so that definitely made a change yes. in your career. Um, do you leave it more uh, as a new beginning or as the next step of the rise? It, it feels like both. It's, it's like a... Uh, a new beginning to us in the sense that, you know, I mean, every drummer plays differently. He yeah. brings in his style. He, you know, uh, even though we're, we're playing songs from, you know, the previous albums, uh, he brings in a different feel. It's a, it's a new energy. It's a, it's a new rhythmic sense, you know, to the song. So it, it infuses a, a different kind of feel for everyone. It, um, and at the same time, yeah, it is a it's another chapter to Dream Theater. It's a continuation, but I think it's it's going to prove to be an extremely uh, fulfilling and exciting and thrilling uh, uh, continuation. And and I think uh, the it's it's boundless as as far as I'm concerned uh, as to where we can go musically. Mm -hmm. And we're all you know it, we're very uh, much each and every one of us looking forward to to approaching, going into the studio and approaching the next album and the next material and, and uh, really pushing the envelope once again. And has the title anything to do with the um, recent story of the band, which no, was no. a bit complex? <laughs> the title has everything to do with what everyone is okay. inundated with now. If you watch the news, I mean, look at all the transformations that are going on around the world, all the uprisings, you know, we have social issues, political issues. Um, that that are really um, you know it's unprecedented what we're seeing out there um, and I think you know that basically with the subject matter with what we're talking about whether it be a, a personal view or just a, a an observation as a society or whatever it's a dramatic turn of events is what we're witnessing here today the whole planet is is going through a serious uh, transition, which I tend to think is is going to better humanity if we can get through. It. Yeah. You know, if something drastic doesn't happen, I think that we will find ourselves in a much better place. Um, just because I think that people have a voice now. People are saying, you know what? All I want in life is fair treatment. I want what everyone should have, and that is a good life, a life that I can. Uh, live with dignity and that's all I want. I don't want anything else other than to be able to live with you know with respect and vice versa and and have something yeah. that I can call my own. Yeah. You started to tour previously than the release of the record during mm -hmm. the summer. Yeah right. Why yeah. that choice? I mean you wanted to test the new material or you wanted to Well like... the only new material we played on that was on the backs of angels. One song. Yeah one song. Yeah. So it wasn't really to go out and see, hey, is everybody going to like this? Um, we, were, we were just um, in a position that 
we thought it was important for us to get out there so that everyone, as many people as possible, would be introduced to Mike, Mike oh. Mangini, and to the whole new uh, feel of dream theater, you know? The, I mean, four-fifths are still the same, yeah. but it's the one-fifth that we wanted everyone to be introduced sure. to. And I think it worked really well for us because it, it created a lot of excitement, a lot of talk. Um, you know, the boards were rampant with, uh, with conversation and, and their whole feeling of, yeah. of being able to witness Dream Theater with Mangini back there. And it was all positive. It was, you know, it was extremely positive with maybe, I'll be honest, with maybe the odd little, okay. you know, trepidation here and all there. But it's okay. And how does it feel now? I mean, the new songs, do mm -hmm. you think, fit? Uh, perfectly the yes. old classics uh, yeah. and how do you feel from the audience the, the feedback is uh, the feedback has been absolutely incredible each and every night yeah. it's been great uh, you know we're, we're just feeling uh, I mean you know all we have to do is just look out into the crowd as cheesy as corny as this sounds we're seeing a bunch of people smiling back <laughs> yeah. arms in the air you know yeah. and just pumping it and yeah. I mean that's what you want to see that's the reaction that you're going for and that says volumes to us um, and just going on the boards every so often and reading I mean everyone's loving what they're seeing everyone's commenting on the fact that dream theater seems to be rejuvenated yeah. you know that there's a, a whole new power and unity and camaraderie and harmony on stage that they haven't seen or witnessed for quite some time so I think in itself that just that's exactly what we need to see. And do you think that that uh, particular is Mike's fault? The fact that huh. fault. I'm Let's not. call it. <laughs> no, I think you know what it is. I think it's because of who and what we are on stage sure. right now. I mean, you can't lie about that stuff. You can't. You either look like you're going through the motions, or you look like you're actually up there and you're having a great time. You can't put that on. You can't fake that. And if somebody can fake that, well, all the power to them. Go for it. You know, if that, if that works for you and, and that's what you want in life, then go for it. But, no, I think it's just we're on stage and we're genuinely, sincerely yeah. having a great time. And I think that's what they're witnessing. And so they're commenting on what they're seeing. And that's it. This year you got nominated for a Grammy Award yes. as Best hard rock metal performance for the mm -hmm. track on the backs of angels. Mm -hmm. um, which was your first thought, and when you learned actually that you got nominated, and which was your reaction? You were all together when you got the news? No, no, <laughs> no, no. We actually we were all flying into San Diego that day because we were doing a show the next day in right. San Diego. So I received a phone call from John Petrucci saying. James, we've been nominated for a Grammy, and at first I was, what? You know, I mean, it was something that I just thought was never going to happen for the band. I just thought, just due to the nature of our music, that it was just going to be something that we would be, you know, uh, just, uh, it wasn't something that would be noticed, just that simply. And, um, uh, but it was a, uh, unbeknownst to us, I guess, the Grammy Academy did think otherwise, and, and they really did appreciate it. And it was an amazing experience for us because we were able to meet a lot of the artists, you know, other nominees and that. And it was surprising for us how many of them came up to us and said, you know, I love what you guys do. Yeah. been following you guys for years. And to have this, this uh, respect from our contemporaries was just a, a beautiful thing, you know. It was just this recognition and to be able to acknowledge that was saying, okay, we're doing something right. This is great. And, um, you know, it's a whole new arena. It's a, it's a completely uh, foreign world to us. Uh, the, the, that whole Grammy, um, pop, it, cause it's mostly a pop yeah. culture that, that feed into that. But I mean, and I'm not saying like there's 78 categories. So, I mean, no, I, I mean, you know, there is classical, there is jazz and fusion and, and, and many other styles of music um, that are recognized and appreciated and, and given Grammys. But, I, you know, myself personally, I just thought it was going to be something that we were too far left field to, to really be able to become a part of that process. But we were, I was wrong. <laughs> and I think 
you know, having a taste of that has just inspired us to, you know, we'll keep doing what we do on our own terms and always stay true to ourselves. And if it happens again, beautiful. At least we have the experience now. <laughs> we know what to expect. Yeah. It's 20 years this year uh -huh. uh, already since Image and Words uh -huh. has been released. Yeah. Um, that album particularly um, marked your personal debut with mm -hmm. Dream Theater, yes. and it's also universally considered your masterpiece mm. um, and one of the best prog albums ever. Um, Excellent. You also played in Italy once the, the whole album at the Gods of Metal 2007 in its entirety, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Uh, which was amazing. Um, how do you compare, let's say, self-critically, uh, James Lebrie? of 1992 to James Lebrie of today? Mm. Uh, I had uh, limitless amounts of energy. I was just, you know, just thrilled to be doing what we were doing. I was, uh, everything was pretty new to me as uh, in the global sense. Because, I mean, <laughs> images and words went global. It was internationally a hit. And just to be touring everywhere and seeing you know, the reaction to this album was was overwhelming for me. I was, you know, extremely young. And um, so I was out there every night screaming my head off, but having a great time doing it. And and just to me, it was, it was, it was a big learning curve because it was knowing that I had to be very appreciative of the fact that we had this, um, we had this, this, potential to build from something that was being accepted worldwide and it created this foundation that we knew that we were going to be able to build off of to create a very successful career if we played things right. So there was, you know, it, it, at the same time as being, you know, completely excited by the fact that it was a big success, um, there was also in the back of my mind thinking that, okay, we got to keep this going and you know, with the next album, we got to make it even bigger and better, and, and that, and I mean, I, that's like any artist is going to think that. But, uh, you know, compared to today, I, I know how to kind of like uh, take things in stride and, and uh, be a little bit more, I have a, a much richer and a much more rounded perception okay. of what's going on and, and understanding just due to experience. But, you know, I was, you know, I don't regret where I was at that point because it was all about being, you know, very young and energized and excited and taking it to the maximum. Long term. Yeah, hair. long freaking <laughs> thick hair, you know, and all this stuff. Yeah, of course, you know, I had that all going for me. But uh, yeah, so it was, uh, it was a great time. Yeah. I, yeah, it was just a, a beautiful moment in our career. Um, I know you're working on a solo album yes. at the moment. Mm -hmm. How is the working process going? Any anticipation? Uh, yeah, we're that? about four songs into the okay. next solo album, and it's going great. I mean, I think it's 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 a great extension of where we left off with Static Impulse. Sure. I think it's uh, it might not be as much screamo vocals going on, but it's it's a good continuation as to the style of music that we that we introduced at that yeah. point, being more aggressive but very melodically driven and um, it's so far I think you know it's it's exactly what it needs to be and we're pretty excited about it. We being you know Matt and Marcus Foley and Peter Wildeur and uh, well we we actually even brought in uh, uh, another guy to write with us, Peter Witcher from Soil Work. So he's also uh, working with us, okay. and uh, and Ray Rindo, I can't okay. I forget our amazing bass player. So, um, anyways, you know, and it's uh, so it, it's going great. It's what beautiful. you're looking for, what you're trying to achieve with it. Well, what you I'm trying to achieve is that you know, I I would ultimately, you know, well, the last album was received very well, mm. and it did extremely well, and it was critically, you know, accepted uh, to critical acclaim. Um, so, uh, you know, I, what I want from it, I want it to, to show that, you know, that this is just not some fly-by-night project. This is serious, you know, we take this very serious. This is something to be considered as a band, you yeah. know, and, um, and I would ultimately love to see us be able to actually tour with it. So we'll see. We'll see what, what 
that holds this door. Um, one last question. Mm -hmm. uh, the fans would like to know, you can answer or not. Yeah. It's up to, up to you. Yeah. Um, did you have any chance to listen to the EP by Adrenaline Map? Uh, the new project of my tour. I heard a couple of songs. Okay. Yeah. And what's your opinion? Uh, no, I don't really. I, I, I yeah. I, I literally listened to it once. I listened to two okay. songs once. So I'm not in a position to comment. Okay. I really am not. Okay. So I'll, I'll just, I'll not. Okay. So very, very last question. During your career with Dream Theater, you did also high profile tributes, uh, playing their entirely Iron Maiden number yeah, of the yeah, beats. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Um, Dark Side of the Moon by Pink Floyd and Master of Puppets by mm -hmm. Metallica. Um, is this a kind of experience that you would repeat? And which other album you'd like to celebrate with Dream Theater? Well, yeah, I think eventually, you know, I don't know to what extent, but I think eventually, yeah, Dream Theater will do covers. Mm -hmm. um, whether we will sit down and, and actually cover another classical, classic album, I mean, from, from a band or their quintessential album. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know, it, you know, but I, I would think that as far as us, covering particular songs here and there, yeah, I can easily see that happening. Okay. And as far as the next album that we would want to cover, I, well, even though I know inside what I'd like to cover, I would never say what. Okay. Because I, I would like that to be kept as soon. Okay. You know, obviously a surprise. Thanks yeah. very much for your time yeah. and yeah. welcome to Italy once again. Thank and we you. hope to see you soon again. Okay, okay. thank Peace. you. Thank you, okay. John.